What's up guys? Welcome back to my series where we focus on the best fighters in the world. I give you five things they're exceptional at with tips so you can improve and be a little bit more like them. And today we are focusing on my former opponent, Lurdzilla, a Muay Thai legend. I had a request recently to make a video on him. So here we go. I'm the perfect guy to break down why this Muay Thai legend is so fantastic because I went through analyzing him and deciding what he was best at and what I had to be most careful with as I prepared to face him. So without further ado, Lurdzilla. All right, guys, this series is very established. I've made videos on Bokal, Petrosian, Canelo, McGregor, and most recently, Jonathan Haggerty. Although that video was taken down for a short while, but it is back now. You can check it out up there if you missed out on what made Jonathan Haggerty so good. Five fantastic tips. And before we get the video completely underway, I just want to show you guys this awesome cheer that I'm rocking today. Because I've started with karate combat, I guess I'm not going to be focusing as much on the jujitsu. But when I was doing jujitsu, I just got a kick out of it. Little T-Rex with his tiny arms armbar me? Impossible. This rash guard was created and made by X Marshall. They have some fantastic rolling gear, some amazing rash guards. If you guys want to take a look at their website, head over to X marshall.com you can use the promo code gabriel varga to get 10 percent off there's a link down below you can check that out xmarshall.com guys give it a look now let's move on to lurdzilla and the first thing i want to say about this guy is only having five things to say why he's so great is not really enough i'm going to limit it to five today just for the length of the episode but i'm definitely not going to be able to cover everything i'm going to focus on the five things that i deemed the biggest threat when facing him. So let's start off with point number one. And obviously I have to mention this guy's head movement. He is all over the place. It is so fantastic to see punches whizzing by his head, his hands down nice and low, and he's just all over. So hard to catch, so hard to track. We do see fantastic head movement from many boxers, but to see somebody with this level of head movement in kickboxing is almost unparalleled. And why is that? Well, I'll tell you right now. When punches are coming at you, you can be moving your head. You don't really have to worry about kicks or anything like that, but once you add in the kicks and the knees, you have to be very careful about over committing and getting smacked in the face. This is why most people do not try and initiate head movement the way Lurdzilla does. But he is exceptional because as he's dodging punches, he can fade back so far that it's very hard to catch him with a head round kick. So it's unlikely that he is going to slip a punch and then eat a kick because he'll just go here and then he'll fade back. His back flexibility or his leg strength, something about the structure of him being able to limbo his way back and evade kicks to the head, it is phenomenal. Now, of course, the reason he is able to do this is fantastic eyesight. This is not a guessing game with him. He is slipping shots because he sees them and he moves in an exact perfect way to make sure he does not get hit. So if you want to get better at head movement, the main thing you have to do is really increase your eyesight. You can't be blinking, you can't be shying away from shots. One of the ways that I saw a fighter who was also incredible at head movement, I believe his name was Kokolai Kalorsing or something like that, he fought Mighty Mo, and he's just so evasive as a Muay Thai fighter. Anyway, one time I saw him with his back against the wall and his training partners or his coach had a bunch of ping pong balls and they were just throwing the ping pong balls at his head and he was just working away, slipping. A very safe, effective way to work on seeing shots come at you, but obviously with a ping pong ball, you don't have to worry about any actual damage to your face or your head. Now, not all of us wanna go and buy 20 or 30 ping pong balls, but what you can do is have your partner stand in front of you, just go gloves on, but hands loose. And you just kinda of throw like that. Just slow, steady, and you just have to drop your hands. This is what we actually did when we were trying to learn to slip, my training buddies and I, we would take our hands and we just place them behind our back. We tuck our chin to our jaw, and then we just only work head movement. And that's all we would do. And then obviously if you want the guy to throw kicks, you can have him throw light kicks at you. They'll aim for your shoulder, and you'll 
fade back just in case there is that mistake and you don't fade back fast enough they catch you here instead of there but Lurzilla's head movement it's so phenomenal I knew this going in to face him that I would have to not just throw ones and twos because he would be so hard to hit I had to go one two three four five probably down to the body maybe even another shot to just land one or two out of those five six attacks point number two in what makes Lurzilla so successful is his fakes he is very, very good at just lifting a leg. Maybe if your front kick is gonna go all the way up here and here, he just lifts a quarter of the way, just kind of pumps. And then he'll fall into his hands or he'll twitch a little shot out and then he'll come with the full kick. His fakes are so incredible, so on point. He has that science down where he gets the reaction, but he does not put the technique out too far. Because if I go to throw a fake, let's say I'm coming this direction here and I throw my fake way out there, now I have to rechamber it to be safe and then I can move into my next shot. And that means wasted time. And most likely if the guy reacts, he's, oh, he does that. By the time I pull back, he's already had time to recover. Lerzilla's fakes are so good because he has that impeccable timing of just lifting, getting the reaction, and then following. Or faking, and then coming with that kick. This is really a trial and error situation for you. You can't just practice it on the bag or practice it in pad work and just get it down. You have to go in and work it in sparring, and maybe the first time you go too high. Second time you go too low. You just pump a little bit and you don't get the reaction you want. And then you start to find that sweet spot where people react, but you're using minimal effort to get them to react. I knew going in with Lurdzilla, if I overcommitted to blocking things when he faked, it would leave me exposed, which is why we see him so effective at things where he lifts his leg and then, and then he'll switch and knock people out. People overcommit to his small fakes and he finds the opening. The next thing that Lurdzilla is so good at is staying relaxed. And because he can stay relaxed, and because he can drop his hands and take breaks, he does not fatigue. And again, I knew this going in against him. Very often one of my game plans is to fatigue my opponent, to overwhelm them with the cardio that I have. But I knew it would not work very well against Lerdzilla because he's always taking breaks. He'll throw a shot, he'll back up, he'll let his hands go down. He'll recover almost 100% between each combination. This is something that comes with experience. We have talked about fight IQ before and what that means. And really, once you've developed that fight IQ, you have the experience level to take breaks in between, to let yourself rest. So it's not always go, 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 and then you step out and you're really tight and you're still fatiguing yourself. Lerdzilla is so amazing at this, and this is why we do not see him fade in fights. If anything, he can ramp up as he gets closer to the end of a fight. Now, you might not be like Lerdzilla, and you might not want to drop your hands on the outside of every exchange, but what you can do is you can keep your hands up and just loosen a little bit. You let your stomach relax a little bit, because when you're in that tight zone, it needs to be squeezed to protect your Yourself. but once you step out the stomach can relax a little bit the arms can just maybe drop a tad you maybe let your elbows rest against your body give them a little bit of a break you can recover on your breathing it's a very safe effective way to make sure you don't tire out and again we don't need to do it exactly like Lordzilla but actually adding this into your sparring or your fighting will make a world of difference in your cardio next up something that I recognized about Lordzilla which was going to be very dangerous was his ability to catch kicks and throw people down. And I knew he was so good at this that our basic game plan was throw low kicks and nothing else, pretty much. Let the hands go and throw the low kicks. Throw the low kicks, let the hands go. Don't worry about head kicks or body kicks. Now I did end up throwing a couple of them here and there and I even landed a few kicks to his face, but it was not part of the game plan and they only landed because he was probably not expecting them later in the fight because I had not been throwing them up to that point. But Lerdzilla's ability to catch a kick, even in very unorthodox ways, where he'll scoop under and he'll sweep you out. My brother and I basically looked at this guy and went, you know what? Let's just not let any body round kicks go because as soon as we throw them, he's either gonna slip back as we already talked about or even worse, he's gonna catch it and dump you down to the ground. And this was back when you were allowed to do that in kickboxing and it does not look good on the scorecards. Now, learning to catch kicks takes time. And again, experience. And you don't pull it off the way Lurdzilla does until you are relaxed. But if you want to get better at it, one of the main things that you have to get very good at is transitioning from blocking punches and then recognizing that a kick's coming 
and being able to reach and grab. Many people are good if you throw an individual round kick at them, just the round kick on its own, they can go, okay, attack, and I can block it or catch it. But when the punches are coming and then the kick comes, that's much more difficult. And Lerdzilla still catches kicks. So if you are looking for sort of a difficulty, we want to up it every time, sort of a ladder structure, one, two, three. You start somebody off and you have them, okay, catch my round kick, catch my front kick, catch my round kick. When they can do everyone effectively, then maybe I throw two punches in front. Bump, bump, and catch it. Bump, bump, and catch it. Bump, bump, and catch it. And then number three, moving up in difficulty, we'll have a little bit of give and take. We'll do some light sparring, and then you have to see if you can actually continue to catch these kicks. It is no doubt one of the reasons Lordzilla is so fantastic. And let's move on to our final point for today. And to me, when I was getting ready to fight him, it was the fact that he does not overcommit. So what do I mean by not overcommitting? Well, we already talked about his ability to slip, but his ability to slip is no good if you dive in and you throw your shots really hard because you've committed too much to that. But if you tap and step back, or tap and step back, you throw your kicks, always keeping in mind defensive mindset and not always boom, 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 hitting as hard as you can, putting your head into that zone where you can easily be countered. That's a little bit more dangerous, but what Lordzilla does so well is he'll tap, he'll hit them, but he'll stay long range. He hits and he's ready right away to get out. He does not throw 100% intent into his shots, which is one of the reasons that he probably does not score loads of KOs with his hands but that doesn't matter because he picks people apart and the damage he takes is so minimal because he doesn't overcommit to those attacks. Now this style is not for everybody because if you're a big power puncher who likes KOs, then you want to commit. But if you're somebody who has a little bit less power than the people in your weight class, you could go, okay, you know what? I'm going to use intelligence and I'm gonna make sure that when I throw my punches, I'm staying long range. I'm keeping back instead of getting myself in here where I hit with power and I wanna be able to follow through, I keep everything long. And then whenever I finish a shot, I'm ready to twitch my head out of the way. Long, long twitch back. Again, one of the reasons that Lordzilla is a superstar in the Muay Thai world. So guys, that's it. That's what I want to talk to you today about Lordzilla. We have not seen him in 1FC in quite some time. I'm looking forward in 2022 to seeing him back. I love when people I have fought and especially people I've defeated continue with their career and continue to just get wins and look phenomenal. And Lordzilla has been doing just that, just continuing to amaze people with his incredible skills. So hopefully we'll see him back in 2022, putting on fantastic fights, continuing to get amazing wins. And we'll leave it there for today, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Make sure you head over to xmarshall.com Check out the gear they have there. And as always, guys, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.